Hi, it's Dwyer. It's the day before the big fight. Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders. Let's talk about how big the moment is. I think it needs to be mentioned here. For those wondering how I stand on the fight, I like Billy Joe Saunders. Right? Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I like Billy Joe Saunders to pull the upset. I admit that it's going to be uphill, but I believe he has a decided foot speed and tempo advantage on Canelo. If he can take the crowd out of the fight in the first three rounds of the fight, if he can mock Canelo a little bit like Ray Leonard, mock Duran in round seven of their rematch, or like Roy Jones, to his detriment, mocked his opponent in the gold medal game in the 1988 Olympics. Then I think it'll draw the judges, it'll draw the fans into the fact that Canelo can't catch up with him. The odds allow me also to have an under 10 and a half rounds. So if this fight turns out to be Canelo against Amir Khan, where Canelo can't match Khan in hand speed, but is able to land one big shot that ends it all. Well, as long as the ending comes before the midway point of the 11th round, then I'm good. So I'm taking the plus 500. Actually, I got worse odds than that. I'm taking the plus 400 on Billy Joe Saunders to win the fight hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds at a plus 135. That's what I like. But let's talk about what you should be thinking about. Because I don't think it's coming through in the sports reporting I've seen. Understand right now in America, they aren't allowing arenas to be packed in most of the 50 states. Right? They're not. There are very few states right now, very few, that allow packed arenas. Let me tip my hat to Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Understand it took bravery weeks ago for Governor Abbott to declare that you could be out in public in a packed stadium in Texas. Folks, that's new. This is the COVID world, right? Understand here where I am in California, you're not allowed to have packed stadiums. And that's with numerous sports teams here, right? The 49ers, the Golden State Warriors, the San Francisco Giants, the Oakland A's. They aren't allowed to have packed stadiums. Now, it's against the backdrop of the world just reopening, of Texas being an exception to the rule that we're getting news that's simply shocking. According to Eddie Hearn, this fight, Canelo, who everyone knows here in the States, versus Billy Joe Saunders, who very few people know in the States, very few, has actually set the record for the most indoor boxing seats sold in the United States. Understand, this record goes back not to the Mike Tyson 1980s. No, it goes back to the Muhammad Ali, Leon Spinks fight in the 1970s. Now, I know some of you from the UK are pointing out that there have been fights in Wembley with more people, right? Okay, fair enough. Let me also say, too, I believe if you go back to the Jack Dempsey era, there might have been some early fights with more people here in the United States. But let me just add that there's a wrinkle here. Understand, many people are afraid to take off masks. Many people are afraid to stand within six feet of you. That's with more than 50% of the adults in the United States right now having already been vaccinated. Right? Folks are still afraid.
to sit next to you at a table in the bar. <coughs> Bars don't allow patrons to be within six feet of each other in most parts of the Western United States. So understand, Canelo's box office pull in getting more than 63,000 ticket sales, right, literally as we exit a COVID pandemic is simply astonishing. Right, for those of you who've attended fights, Vladimir Klitschko, Anthony Joshua, that have had more than 63,000 fans, I want you to ask yourself, would the crowd have been as thick? Would the crowd have come out if most of the country was still under a COVID lockdown? And if people were still uncertain about whether or not they should wear masks in public after being vaccinated, and if your armed forces, like the U.S. Marine Corps here, had 40% of its members flatly refusing to get vaccinated. There's going to be a lot of uncertainty, folks, out there concerning COVID for several months. There's going to be a lot of uneasiness here in the states. I'm telling you, in my state of California, people were so upset with the COVID lockdown that Governor Gavin Newsom is subject to recall right now. We're having a recall election here, right? Caitlyn Jenner is challenging him, as are other candidates. But yet in Texas, they're having this fight. And in Texas, Canelo, right? Understand, this is about people buying a ticket with Canelo on it. Right? He's not fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Canelo is able to pull 63,000 plus. Right? The number is actually higher than I'm stating here. To a fight against a guy, great fighter, but who very few people know. Right? I don't believe Billy Joe Saunders has ever pulled anything close to this amount. I was impressed that Canelo was able to sell out Madison Square Garden. Understand, Madison Square Garden has a seating capacity of less than half of the crowd you're going to have in cowboy land here. So Canelo is rare. Canelo is a fan favorite on a par that is very rare. Manny Pacquiao, by the way fought in this stadium. He did not pull 63,000 fans. Now those were during healthier times. Just imagine how many fans would have come out during these COVID pandemic times. This is one of the most remarkable stats I've seen in sports. Again, Saul Alvarez, Canelo, for his upcoming fight is about to set a record in the United States for the largest number of fans at an outdoor boxing match that has existed since Muhammad Ali and the 1970s. Simply astonishing. I tip my hat to Canelo, but of course I'm a gambler. I'm going to be betting on Billy Joe Saunders to win the fight hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Saunders has to understand the popularity of the fighter he's facing. He's going to have to dance around Canelo. He's going to have to wake up the crowd, shuffle at times, right? Just to let people understand, hey, look, I'm moving my feet here. I'm the only one landing punches here. I'm dancing around this guy. Let me also say this too. Saunders has no excuses. He complained about the ring, folks. This is the largest ring 
that Billy Joe Saunders has ever fought in. To put it in perspective, it's my understanding that for the rematch of the Roberto Duran Sugar Ray Leonard fight, that ring was 21 feet. It's my understanding that this ring is actually going to be bigger than 21 feet. Right? Canelo, a sportsman, has said, look, if he wants the ring to be as big as Dallas Stadium, he can have it. Right? Canelo wants no excuses. Canelo believes he is the best. Canelo's not concerned with ring size. I believe he should be. I'm expecting Saunders to use every inch of this ring. Right? Hey, player, you argued for it. You got it. You might as well use it. Right? He needs to put on a show. But he also needs to understand what Paulie Malignaggi has said. What many people suspect. Many of you here online in the comments to my earlier videos on this fight have said they don't believe anybody can beat Canelo in this climate by decision. Right? The feeling is Canelo is that loved. You're going up against a brand that's overpowering. You have to stop him. Someone here left a comment saying, when you're fighting the champ, you have to beat the champ. We'll overlook the fact that, folks, they're both champions. Only one of these guys is unbeaten. And it's the guy perceived to be the challenger, Billy Joe Saunders, such as the Canelo brand. That Canelo's even obscuring those facts. This is a total solar eclipse here. So what Saunders has to do is he just has to come out. And he just has to show us early. At the end of the third round, if you're sitting there and you notice that the crowd is quiet, you look down on your scorecard and you notice that you have Saunders up. Two rounds to one. Hell, I'll settle for that after three rounds. If Saunders is up 3-0, folks... Canelo's in big trouble. I want you to, to scrutinize Canelo's list of opponents. Right? Understand, some of them aggressive on their front foot. James Kirkland, for example. Right? Callum Smith until he fought Canelo. Right? These are front foot heavy guys. Right? Other guys play a cat and mouse game. They're outside. They've mastered spacing. But they aren't there to dance. They're there to hurt you. Gennady Golovkin. Right? I'm just telling you that if you look at Canelo's list of opponents carefully, you're going to notice that the guys who move, Floyd Mayweather, Arislandy Lara, right? Even Kovalev, who moved for that fight, gave Canelo problems. Now here he's in with a mover who knows how to draw attention to what he's doing. Right? In other words, Billy Joe's a guy who will shuffle his feet. He'll move in a way where you understand he's making the other guy miss. Right? He's going to do things where he's going to drop his hands and you're going to realize that he has the distance read to the point where against one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound Billy Joe is going to believe he can't be hit now I'm just telling you if you have what I call a showman in the ring with a lead late in the fight the slower moving opponent is going to have his hands full. In round seven of the Duran fight, and I have that Ray Leonard Duran rematch in my favorites folder. By the way, the fight's closer than people realize. Right? But in round seven, Ray Leonard, realizing that Duran was keying off his body, takes a step back and just starts moving his upper body. Right? Folks, at the time, the move was so controversial that Howard Cosell on the telecast, the audio's on the video in my favorites folder, openly says that Angelo Dundee 
in Ray Leonard's corner is going to have to talk to his fighter about the taunting. Right? Given Duran's stature in the sport, even back then, Duran was known as one of the best lightweight champions in history. Right? Duran, of course, had won the first fight. Ray's actions look tasteless. They bordered on tasteless. Keep in mind, this was around the part of the fight where Ray Leonard is doing bolo punches, but he's hitting Duran with the other hand. Right? Ray then starts staring at Duran. Ray at one point goes off by himself and shuffles his feet. Now my point to you is this. I understand fully that there's going to be a group out there that's going to say this is tasteless. Right? Understand, in 1988, Roy Jones lost the gold medal game. Right? It's about he dominated. He was so dominant that they gave him the award for the most dominant fighter in the Olympics. But Roy Jones is a silver medalist because the Olympics were in South Korea and the guy Roy Jones was taunting was the South Korean fighter. The crowd didn't like it. The judges didn't like it. Amateur boxing is about sportsmanship. So I have no doubt that if Billy Joe Saunders starts shuffling his feet starts talking to Canelo, starts moving his upper body like Ray Leonard did, right? Take a step back while the other guy is fainting like he's going to jump inside, which is what Durant's doing. You start moving your body to mock the fainting. If Billy Joe Saunders does that, okay, part of the crowd's going to be turned off. But it's going to underscore the level of dominance. Right? Understand, it's the kind of thing where when you see Ray Leonard doing that against Roberto Duran, you're thinking to yourself, oh, Ray's not afraid of this guy. <laughs> right? That loss in the first fight, that's in the rearview mirror. Ray's in control here. Ray's handling distance. Ray feels he has this guy timed. I'm just telling you that when you're fighting a fighter as popular as Canelo, you're going to have to establish that kind of idea in the minds of the judges. I think Saunders can. I think he's a special fighter. I think we knew several rounds before the end of the David Lemieux fight that Billy Joe Saunders was beating him badly. That's the dynamic you need here, right? I think Canelo, as in the Kovalev fight, is going for the KO. I think he plans to methodically break Billy Joe Saunders, get Saunders on his back foot, hunt Saunders. Well, let me just say this diplomatically. There are people in boxing who want to be hunted. That's their game. Let me also say this too. You look at a fighter, whether it's an Ali, whether it's a Jorge Paez, if you remember him, and the guy looks like a clown, the guy is, you know, acting all ridiculous, Jake Paul today. He's at press conferences doing stupid things. You say, man, this guy is a punk. How is this guy going to have the mental fortitude to stay upright? And then you're watching the fighters in the ring, in the main event, and you understand you've been dealing with a poker player. That the guy is, you know, smiling, looking friendly, Magic Johnson in basketball. The guy is smiling, he's looking friendly, he's high-fiving everyone, doesn't look like he's feeling a lot of pressure. Then you get to the fourth quarter and he's an absolute killer. That's who Billy Joe is. Don't let the smile and the buffoonery fool you, right? This is boxing. He's the latest in a long line of guys who, you know, at the press conference, he's cussing you out. You know, here he's talking about Mexican beef to Canelo, who's been busted for clenbuterol twice, right? You know, he's getting under your skin. He's talking. He's saying, look, I don't give an S about Canelo, Right, people are saying, oh, come on, this 
this guy's a punk. He's going to get killed. Right? Canelo said he believed <laughs> he believed that many Englishmen wanted to see Billy Joe Saunders get knocked out. Right? Don't fall for it. That's like a poker player showing up wearing dark glasses, looking like he's been out drinking, looking like he hasn't slept in three or four days. And yet when the game starts, he's counting cards. That's who Saunders is. I believe if Saunders can grab the crowd early, he could win this going away. I know one judge had the Floyd Mayweather fight a draw. Right? Mayweather Canelo. What did your scorecard say about that fight? I thought Floyd established superiority early. I know Dan Rayfield at the time was posting his scorecard online after six rounds. He had Floyd Mayweather up 6-0. I'm telling you, I stopped scoring myself in the second half of the fight because I reached a conclusion that Canelo needed a KO to beat Floyd Mayweather. We've seen the Canelo fight before, where a guy jumped out to a huge lead. Teddy Atlas, Mike Tyson's former trainer, Michael Moore's former trainer. Let's remember, Teddy Atlas led Michael Moore to uh, the heavyweight championship. Right? Teddy Atlas was watching the Amir Khan fight, and I agree with Teddy, 100%. Canelo American, and he had American winning every round, right? Of course, we're dealing with American. I have no idea what's going on with that brother, but there's American hanging around the pocket on Canelo. It's like, hey, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're off to a fast start. What's the back foot for? You know, if you're off to the fast start, you have the hand speed advantage and stuff like that. You don't hang around the pocket against Sonny Liston, against Nigel Benn. Why would you do that against Canelo? Well, all I'm saying is, I thought the only round that Canelo won in that Amir Khan fight was the round where he knocked out Amir Khan. So I personally believe that if Billy Joe Saunders can bring some movement and some intensity to this fight, back foot intensity, counterpunching intensity. I believe he can jump out to a lead, just like his good friend Tyson Fury did against Vladimir Klitschko. You remember that fight? Tyson Fury jumps out to a huge lead. So by the eighth round, you thought, okay, Klitschko, popular fighter at the time, needs a KO to win the fight. I believe that's the dynamic if I'm right on this, that Billy Joe Saunders has the ability to set up. But if I'm wrong, as long as Canelo gets a stoppage in the first ten and a half rounds of this fight, I'll live for it another day. That's the bet I like. The underdog hedged with the under ten and a half rounds. Uh, should be a great fight. It's going to be before a record crowd. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.